this week's show. The Georgia Southern Eagles wrap up their first week in full pads in preseason. We'll let you know how things are going. Give you an update on the ongoing battle for who will start at quarterback and take a look at who will be blocking for him as we look at the Eagle offensive line. All that and more as we welcome you inside the Eagles Nest. Welcome to another week of the Eagles Nest. I'm your host, Josh Aubrey, being joined by Mike Anthony, sports editor and Georgia Southern beat writer for the Statesboro Herald. And we appreciate Mike gutting through uh, what's been a little bit under the weather this week. It's 95 degrees, so of course you get a cold. (laughs) Of course. All right. Well, the Georgia Southern Eagles have now been in pads for a week. You learn a little bit more when they put those pads on and gets another week closer to the start of football season, Mike, anything in particular stand out to you, in your mind over how things are going right now? Well, I think overall what we've seen the last couple of practices is just that speed start to pick up, more and more stuff getting installed. Right now you're in that window where summer classes are over, fall classes haven't begun, so they can really devote themselves to learning 100%, uh, uh, getting those playbooks down. And with the pads going on, you start to see that speed pick up. I know we talked a little bit last week about not having as many full contact practices. you got to walk that line between getting up to speed and trying to not have the trainer's room full. But right now that's what you're seeing is those guys really start to ramp it up. And talking to some of the guys after practice today, I get the feeling that most of them are in that middle-of-the-year mindset. They're all back at work. I guess the big question from now up until the time of the Auburn game will be centered around the quarterback situation and how things are going there. I know that LeBaron Anthony and uh, Shy Wirtz have kind of separated themselves in the first week or so, but that's only mainly because the other two had just now gotten there. Now they've had some time. Coaches mentioned that Jalen Frazier's made uh, leaps and bounds. I don't know how much that is in, in only a week or so, but how do you see as the quarterback, you've been watching a little bit of practice, your thoughts on how things look? Well, I think if you had to name a starter today, and this is just my opinion, but I think that it would be Shy words. He's a guy who was recruited to play option. You know, last year the offense may have gotten away from that a little bit, but as soon as uh, Brian Cook came over to be the new offensive coordinator, this was an offense that's tailor made for his skill set. Cook actually recruited him uh, when he's at Georgia Tech, so very familiar with each other, familiar with the offense, familiar with the concepts, and as you said, you know, just being in that system, being familiar, that goes a long way early in camp. But physically, he's also put on a few pounds since he first got to camp last year. You've got to be durable. You've got to be just a, a physical freak almost to run that uh, position as quarterback in an option offense. You also need a bunch of guys you can depend on because, as we've seen throughout the years, you're never safe. If you're going to get hit, you need to be durable. But at the same time, you need to have other options, as it were. Still hasn't had a college snap under center during a game, so that's still left to be determined how that will work. But we had a chance to talk with both Shy Wirtz and talk to Coach about how things are coming around. I think that we've had good energy like I talked about earlier. I think that uh, really every day, maybe with the exception of one, that we practice the way that we want to practice and uh, being in an above the line manner. I thought the offense had a really good day today. The defense has had good days. The offense has had good days. And, uh, you know, that's, that's where we want to be. We want to be in a place where both sides of the ball are competitive. Uh, certainly want to be in a position where both sides of the ball are really trying to compete with each other. And uh, we got to just continue to stress fundamentals. We got to continue to stress uh, going through the, the piece of it that we need to, which is making sure that we're continuing to focus on the little things over and over and over again and, and how we fight through some, some adversity. It was hot today. Kind of the first time it's really been that. It's been a mirage here for about three or four days where it's been 68, 70 degrees it feels like outside. But today was the first time it was really, really hot. We certainly have an idea where we'd like to kind of be uh, and meaning more so in kind of six part, six piece compartments uh, where we go through and would like to be at this point or like to be at that point. Uh, you know, but truthfully, if, if we may have too much in or we start to lose any amount of focus on anything uh, from an installation standpoint, we, we truthfully, we need to cut back a little bit. One of the beauties of coming in early the way that we have is it gives us time. Uh, it gives us time to focus on the little things and it gives us time to kind of pump the brakes a little bit when we need to and, uh, and kind of forge forward when we need to as well. The quarterback situation, it, it seems like Shy has kind of taken the majority of the snaps with the ones. Yeah, he has to this point in time. He's taken the majority of them, but I, I really think all four of those have, guys have come so far. You know, they, they all really fit the system that we're uh, trying to run, and I think Brian's doing a good job of making the system fit them as well. 
Uh, I think the Coach Cook has really done a good job and has a good relationship with those guys uh, for what they're trying to do. They can all run it really well. Uh, we're, we're certainly in a position where I think some of them throw it better than some of the other ones do right now. But being able to be a dual threat quarterback and be explosive, take a broken play in some situations and make it a big play, uh, those are the things that we've been able to, to focus on. Shy has taken the majority of snaps of the ones, but LeBaron has had a really good camp. And I think that every day, every day, I think you see that Cato and Jalen are both coming on. And uh, J Jalen looks so much farther ahead than he was three days ago. And obviously, you know, Cato comes in here and having some option background, some experience, and, and really manages the ball really well. I feel like it's, it's definitely going pretty good. You know what I'm saying? We had a lot of stuff in the spring that we put in. Camp just adding a little, just a little bit more to it. But uh, I definitely feel like it's going in the right direction. For you, how do you feel like you know, your progress is going, catching on to things? I was definitely going good. You know what I'm saying? Coming to the fall camp, of course, you know what I'm saying? We had a spring that Coach Cook put in the offense. And uh, good, like I said, just now just, he's just putting a little, little bit by a little bit in and teaching me, you know what I'm saying, all the, all the right reads, all the right, you know what I'm saying, mechanics and stuff like that that I need to uh, run this offense. Uh, Why well, I feel the most comfortable, uh, I don't know. I just out of the pocket, you know what I'm saying? Um, getting me outside of the pocket, outside of the tackle, being able to make throws on the run. And what I feel like uh, I need the most work is to send back in the pocket um, and, and allow things to come to me, you know what I'm saying, not forcing it. And uh, if it's not there, don't force it, just take off and run. Mr. Tracy Ham, he talked to us last night, and uh, you got to come to work every day, you know what I'm saying, no matter where you're at on the Detroit, you got to be able to come out here and be able to lead your team at the quarterback position because all those guys, the offensive line, the running backs, receivers, they look, they look to you to, 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 to take command of the whole offense. So you got to be the guy that, that's always calm, always relaxed, always knowing what you're doing. It's being on top of everything. And having seen, you know, the guys before you, maybe mm -hmm. you saw some things that, that you want to be like with mm -hmm. Kevin and Fabian and those guys. Maybe there's something that you learned that mm -hmm. they did that maybe you want to stay away from. Any quarterback who, who played the next season is going to be compared to Kevin and Fabian. Uh, but me personally, I want to be my own person. Um, but I, I definitely learned a few things for them that I'll, I'll put into my, I'll try to put into my game. And uh, it's some things that they did that, you know what I'm saying, try to stay away from. But like I said, you know what I'm saying, I'm, me personally, I want to create my own legacy as, as a Georgia Southern quarterback. Well, Mike, whoever comes out from this as the starting quarterback will have benefit from a uh, Pretty revamped offensive line. A lot of the same guys are around, but the philosophy is a lot different. The coaches are obviously different. You've got a guy that's leading the offensive line in Bob Bodine, who's been here before and has also been extensively with an option uh, base, whether he's been the offense coordinator or the offensive line coach. So we know he brings that to the table. It seems like all the guys are buying in, and you've got a lot of talent back there or up there as well. Yeah, they're, they're buying into the system, and part of that is in the uh, physical constraints of it. They've all slimmed down a little bit. That was a big part, a big concern really when Brian Cook came was maybe not knowing if he had the types of guys that he needed up front to run his offense. Well, it's one thing to go out and recruit a different type of guy, but with the strength and conditioning program, uh, Coach Tyson Summers gave a lot of credit to the offensive linemen and how they were able to get after it all summer. They've slimmed down a little bit, and it goes towards that aggressive attitude that they want to have. I think you can tell from talking to some of those offensive linemen, when they're a couple pounds lighter, they're a step or two faster, it helps all the more with them wanting to get after it, wanting to go downfield and mix it up. And it also seems like these guys, like much of the team, have a bit of a chip on their shoulders. They couldn't avoid hearing the, the uh, people complaining that, the, oh, well, look at the offensive line. They're not blocked. That's why we can't run. That's why we can't pass. And it seems like they've kind of gotten that to help bond them together as well. Well, yeah, you always hear about how the offensive linemen are the unsung heroes of the offense. They're the ones that protect the quarterback. They're the ones that make the holes. And, you know, you've got different guys who end up in the end zone with the football dancing around, but it's usually because there are five guys up front all doing their job, and they don't talk about it much. They don't get the camera time, but their pride's every bit as much hurt seeing uh, Georgia Southern no longer be at the top of the list in rushing yards because that's a direct reflection on them. I know that they're eager to get right back up top this year. All right, well, we had a chance to talk with Coach Summers and a couple of the offensive linemen about how things are going. I think obviously we knew going into last season that uh, that would be kind of a question mark going into the season. 
Uh, obviously, you know, didn't necessarily have the performance that we would have liked uh, out of that group. I think that there's a group that has had the best summer and adding Tommy Boynton has been a huge piece for us, not just from uh, an athletic standpoint, but just what he brings to the table uh, from a leadership standpoint and also from what he's doing with uh, bringing these young guys along and teaching them. Uh, I think obviously a, a year older, Kurt Rainey, a year older, Ryan Northrop, a year older, you know, uh, with Jeremiah Colbreth and a lot of those guys, Drew Wilson be a true sophomore this year. Uh, they've been downhill, they've been attacking. Uh, I think they're really bought into what Coach Bodine is teaching those guys. And, and I think they're playing with a lot of confidence right now. What does Coach Bodine bring? He's mean. <laughs> How about you give him a shove on your way up when you square up? Okay? Don't just stop and put your hand on him. I gotta keep climbing, but I give him a nice hard shove. He brings a lot. He's a he's a special guy. A lot of intensity. It's like a mellow intensity type guy. It's weird, but it, it, it gets everybody hot. Let's go, right guard, right tackle, left guard, left tackle. Hurry up. He brings energy. He he doesn't okay. let you take okay. a rep off. He always is gives you the truth. Regardless of whether that's the truth you want to hear or not, he tells you the way it is. He tells you what you need to improve upon. He, uh, because of his extensive option background, he knows different wrinkles and solutions to problems that we see on the field. I think what you got is with Coach Bodine is somebody that's obviously been through this system in a lot of different ways. Uh, he's a guy that's been in the gun option piece before, a guy that's been under center on two or three different staffs. Most of those people either being on Coach Johnson's or part of a, one of Coach Johnson's kind of disciples, so to speak. And, and so you get to this point where he's been a coordinator as well in both of those systems. And now he's, he's, uh, he's a line coach. Uh, I think he's really happy, he and his family, to be here in Statesboro coaching these guys. And I think he's doing a great job with not only technique, but effort and toughness. I mean, and at that position, if you can play smart, if you can play physical, and that, that style and that brand of play that, you know, that I've become accustomed to seeing really over spring practice in the first seven days to now, what an awesome sight. Hey, Ms. Thompson, everything's fine. It's gonna be no problem, I'll have you done in a few minutes. My name is Paisley Nordhaus, part owner of Complete Car Care, and I want you to come see me. And one final note before we go, Mike, we have the Fan Fest coming up on Friday evening. A chance for the, the fans to, to get their season tickets and also get interview, or not interviews, but rather autographs and things like that and mingle with the player. Yeah, they can't do our job. We, no, we no. interview, but come on now. <laughs> but no, uh, a good chance for uh, uh, fans that didn't get a chance to come out in the spring to meet some of the new guys, a few new coaches to, to meet and get to know, but always a good uh, interaction with the players. Every year, it seems like the players get better and better uh, with the kids, with the fans. I know they have a fun time, you know, being able to sign some autographs, throw footballs around with the kids. And it, it, when it's this hot outside, as excited as they are to get back to business, to get back on the field when it's 95 degrees outside it gets a little tiring just hitting people you'd rather sign an autograph or two all right well that'll wrap things up for now for mike anthony i'm josh aubrey thank you for joining us hope to see you again next week